Americans are always intrigued with a murder mystery. And the Lincoln assassination is one of the best murder mysteries you could ask for. Mary Surratt, if it were not for the Lincoln assassination, would not be in any history book whatsoever. She was a typical middle-class uh, Southern sympathizer woman. She was educated shortly in a um, Catholic boarding school in Alexandria, Virginia, and then she married at age 17, quickly became the mother of three children, and she and her husband ran the 300-acre plantation that we now have converted to a museum, and they ran it as both farmland, he had a tavern within his house, he had a public dining room for travelers, he ran the post office, so he literally had the corner on the market at this intersection, which is now Clinton, Maryland. She became widowed in 1862 in the middle of the Civil War. Because of her financial situation, uh, by uh, the fall of 1864, when a new Maryland state constitution outlawed slavery in the state, she was forced to give up these large holdings, move into a uh, house that she owned in Washington, D.C., and start a boarding house. Uh, her son, her oldest son, had run away to join the Confederate Army. Her youngest son was a Confederate uh, courier. And uh, in the fall of 1864, she was introduced to John Wilkes Booth um, and um, became either knowingly or unknowingly a member of his conspiracy, first to kidnap President Lincoln, and a conspiracy that turned later to assassination. She actually had been here a few hours before the assassination doing the bidding of John Wilkes Booth. She claimed that she came here on private business. However, she brought with her Booth's field glasses or binoculars to be hidden here. He asked her to deliver a package tied up in paper. She claimed she did not know what was in uh, that package, but she told her tenant down here that uh, he should hide them and have the shooting guns ready for parties that would call that night. And of course, the parties that called that night at about midnight were John Wilkes Booth and his accomplice, David Harrell. They were here only about five minutes before heading south to Dr. Mudd's house. However, that was very damaging testimony against her when delivered to the military court. Mrs. Surratt never saw the light of day after having been arrested and questioned. She spent two weeks in the old Capitol prison in Washington, D.C. before being transferred to the penitentiary on the grounds of the Washington Arsenal, uh, where her trial and execution would take place. It was a brutally hot day on July the 7th when the uh, four convicted uh, felons marched to the gallows on the grounds of the Washington Arsenal and met their fate. We still cannot determine, number one, was she completely innocent? Was she completely guilty? Did they have the right to try her based on the rules of law and the laws of war at that particular time? And it's a split decision between historians. Most of the people agree that she had to have had some knowledge of at least the kidnap plot, but was her role so severe that she deserved the fate that she got? And as long as it's a question mark, uh, we enjoy the debates and we also enjoy the visitation down here. And the true answer will never be known to my, uh, to my thinking. It's somewhere in the gray stage between black and white.